news from Alberta. Justin Trudeau brought his daughter to a public event. And our friend Arthur Green from Western Standard was there. Joining us now via Skype to talk about this bizarre occasion is Arthur Green. Arthur, great to see you again. Thanks for joining us. You're the legislature reporter for Western Standard. Tell us what the event was, and then we'll throw to a video clip of it. Uh, yeah, so last Saturday, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau held a $1,000 ahead fundraiser uh, here in Edmonton at the convention center, which was uh, which was quite odd because we all know that the Liberal Party uh, doesn't really have a presence uh, here in Edmonton. So uh, in the room, I counted roughly 100 people inside of the convention center uh, to hear Trudeau speak. Uh, again, half of them may or may have not been staffers of his uh, but I was quite astonished uh, when the prime minister took the stage. Um, he actually brought his daughter, Ella, on stage uh, to show her a room full of people that didn't hate her dad. So basically, he brought, uh, he brought Ella on stage uh, just to show her, hey, there's people that uh, actually do like your dad in politics uh, in Canada. Let's take a look at that now. We've uh, got a one-minute excerpt of your video. Let's watch. Justin Trudeau! Thank you for being here, Ellen. There you go, there you go. Um, but it is important uh, to be able to ground myself and my kids. Uh, and it reminds me why it's so important that we continue to build a positive vision for this country uh, and that we tackle the big challenges we're facing with the goal of solving them. But there's far too many people out there in politics who focus on politics as a way or where the goal is just to get elected. And when all you want to do is get elected, it may seem like a really appropriate and responsible strategy to cleverly divide people, to weaponize intolerance, to amplify fear and anxiety, to exploit people's divisions and concerns about the realities that we're facing in a very complicated world, not so much offer solutions, but offer that echoing back that amplification of things that people are feeling. And you can mobilize that to get elected. But if you really want, and you're really committed to finding solutions for the great challenges that we're facing, if you want to try and bring people together to build that better future for our kids, for our grandkids, then that's hard work. It's hard work, particularly for liberals, where we stand ourselves in the middle of the spectrum. And yes, times are tough right now. Times are tough everywhere around the world. And knowing that we have the best debt to GDP ratio and the lowest deficit in the G7 doesn't reassure someone when they're having trouble paying for their groceries. People are struggling. But ask yourselves, what problem was ever solved by making people more fearful? What problem was ever solved by focusing people on laying blame against a federal government, against a certain group of people, against a minority? What problem was ever solved by dividing people rather than bringing them together? I, I just can't help but chuckle, Arthur. This is the guy who, during the pandemic, said, "Should we even, uh, should we even grant civil liberties to the unvaccinated? How dare you, unvaccinated, expect to sit next to us, the clean people?" This is the person who ran an entire political campaign demonizing the other, a minority, to be sure, and now he's against demonization. Classic Trudeau. Putting aside that. What do you make of him trotting out his daughter? She's a minor, isn't she? I don't know. I don't remember offhand how old she is, but she's just a teenager, I think. What, uh, do you know how old she is? And do you know what, what? What's your take on that part of this, his using his daughter as a prop? I have some thoughts, but I'd like to hear yours first. Um, I don't actually know her exact age. Now, I, I try to keep my opinion out of things to remain unbiased, but it seemed to me 
as if he was uh, grasping at heartstrings, uh, you know, to try to win over the older liberal voters who uh, actually attended this fundraiser. A and I should mention, uh, you know, outside, um, there were quite the number of people uh, flying black flags with expletives on it, expletives on it, uh, as, uh, as the prime minister says, uh, you know, opposed to him coming to Alberta. And during his speech, uh, I did put up several videos. Uh, apparently, I was told I was the only journalist who actually broadcasted these videos. Uh, CBC tried to uh, tried to bury them and frame the prime minister uh, in, in the camera a little bit closer than me to uh, to show that there there was an illusion that there was a lot of people in this place. Um, so as a, it feels to me as if he's on his last leg, and now he's using. The, the family man uh, type persona to, to gain votes. Um, I didn't RSVP for this event, so I caught the Liberals uh, by surprise, of course. Uh, they did let me in. I, I do have a, a press gallery membership with the Western Standard uh, uh, for the Alberta legislature, so I'm an accredited journalist. They couldn't uh, turn me away. Now, they did search me for explosives. Um, this is the uh, this is the third time that I've been with the prime minister in in recent months. I've been searched uh, uh, three times by him uh, for explosives before any of his events. But what really caught me off guard as a was, uh, you know, there were other journalists, mainstream journalists who were allowed to move in this room. Um, they put me on a riser and basically put a liberal staffer next to me, told me I was not allowed to ask questions. Uh, even if I shouted them out, because I did shout at the prime minister at the evacuation center uh, when he visited during the Alberta wildfires. Uh, yeah, I was taken a little off guard of just treatment. Uh, again, I remain, you know, it just, it just, it, it kind of peeved me off a little bit. You know, I wanted to get closer uh, to be able to take some nice pictures. And they were like, no, you're not allowed to move. Uh, while CBC journalists and, you know, they roamed the room. And, and I just thought that that was a bit odd. Now, I did have a red T-shirt on uh, because the Western Standard colors are red and white. So I'm not sure if they mistaken me for a liberal when I first went in there. But uh, it was just quite odd to me as to how I was guarded. <laughs>